Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you could help me out and give these videos a thumbs up, it would be much appreciated. Welcome today into the cab. It's another lovely day. We're in October. We seem to be having an Indian summer, so it's still not... Uh, it is, we're heading into winter, but it's still relatively warm. And today we are ripping up some permanent pasture. And uh, I'll tell you what, in yesterday's video we were talking about some budget tractors and some tractors which are a bit more, a bit more affordable. Um, trouble is, today I'm finding I need every ounce of horsepower out of this tractor. As we rip up this permanent pasture here. This is the only trouble with these new tractors today. They don't quite give you the power to get the job done. I know they're saving on emissions and fuel, but I do find they're not as... They haven't got the guts like the old ones did, you know, back in the day. She's really giving it everything she's got now. <laughs> Come on. Come on, girl. So it is a little bit of a rough ride pulling down this land today, but at least the JD is getting the job done, even though she is struggling a little bit. It's one of those things, isn't it? You sometimes want a little bit more horsepower on certain jobs, and then there's a lot of other jobs where you've always got, you know, enough horsepower, but you can never have too much horsepower. Uh, that's what I always say. But as long as you get the job done, you know, that's the most important thing. The only thing is, you know, with like a smaller budget tractor, with 100 horsepower, I just don't think we'd be able to get by, you know, as a, as a main tractor, not in today's day and age, you know, where we, we, we have high horsepower demanding jobs such as this, where, you know, you need the maximum amount of power your tractor's got. So this is 155, and then it boosts up to 195, uh, which is a fair old whack, but, um, you know, you still get a lot of other machines, you know, you get the big fence, the 828s, the 939s, um, with, you know, crazy horsepower, 300, 400 horsepower, some of them. But on this, I mean, today I can really feel it pulling hard. It's, and there is a number of times throughout the year where I'm, I'm, I am thankful for the 6R. Um, 61155. But, uh, yeah, it would be good to have a, a second horse, a second tractor with like uh, 150, a little bit less horsepower, which you could always use to do the same jobs as the bigger one, if that makes sense. Because if, if the 6R ever went down, say, it's always handy to be able to have a backup tractor which could pull the Pottinger. One of the other things about the 6R is that, you know, it's quite a modern futuristic tractor. It's got all of the tech on it. It's got the ad blue and everything. And it's, when a, when a tractor's working hard like it is today, I really miss the sound I used to get with the old 6.9 and my old 100 series John Deere. They really used to purr along. They used to sound, they used to sound brilliant. But these new ones, unfortunately, unfortunately, they just don't have the same character as the old ones used to have. And also, I find myself more and more as the prices are rising going through like literally hundreds of pounds of ad blue in this tractor and i don't know you know i'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to justify the cost like why you know how can we warrant paying the extra however many hundreds of pounds this thing goes through um per year is it saving us money not really but you know it's supposed to be better for all the emissions and everything which is fair enough but I just don't know if, you know, the farm can keep paying out hundreds of thousands of pounds over years on AdBlue. Um, so, well, I mean, they do make some smaller tractors now, which you can still buy without AdBlue, but then the trouble is then they can't pull your implements. That's the, the bigger implements. So, unless you've got, got a really small implement, but this is a three metre cultivator. You couldn't really go much smaller than this. You could buy a two metre one, maybe two and a half metre, but it'll still be quite difficult to pull on heavier land. I'll tell you what, something I really need on this tractor, desperately, is a front weight. Normally, when I have the front loader on, I can get away with that. I'm, do you know what, I just haven't got the traction at the moment for the Pottinger to do this job on the front wheels. Obviously, it's doing the job, but it would make a huge difference if I had 
make one of those John Deere 900 kilogram blocks you get, or I could get one of those uh, front boxes with uh, maybe with some Ollie's, with Ollie's farm on the front, which would be quite fun, but with a weight as well. Um, I have got the GPS bleeping away on these day because we put the dome on the roof and it's been, it's been quite handy, but then it bleeps at me all day. So maybe you guys could help me out finding, with finding a front weight. Leave a comment in the comment section down below of what you think, what sort of front weight we should go for. Um, do you think, would you like to see a John Deere front weight? Maybe Cherry Products front weight, that would be quite cool. With some Ollie's farm livery. It's so complicated, these new tractors. You've got to go into all the settings, you got to get, ah. I do miss the old ones, really, I do. Funnily enough, a tractor I've been thinking about today was the 7530, because today I've needed a good whack of power, but I, I, I like tractors with character and which sound good. So 7.5 would probably be up there as like a holy tractor. That's the only thing I think which for me personally would replace a 6R. Now, of course not AdBlue, that's the other thing. No, not too many electronics. For the amount of hours we do every year, so if we do a thousand hours a year with it, you know, that'll last years if it's looked after well. And I'd probably do an EGR delete remap and then I'd put a fixed turbo on it. That would be really good then, that would sound mega and it would be so reliable. But the trouble is, they're just becoming harder and harder to find. They're not really going for as, as much money as they used to be. If you find a one with like five, six, seven thousand hours, you can pick them up for 30 grand now. Um, if you know the right people, or if you get in with the farmer well, you know, go and visit them, kick the tires, see what needs fixing on it, and then you can hopefully get it for a good price. And I did today, I got this tractor stuck earlier on the other side of this field, where it's a bit marshy, a bit more boggy, trap drove the tractor, I got in the Manitou, and I used the Manitou's bucket, put it in the ground, and uh, we managed, I, I rocked the Manitou, and we pulled the John Deere out with the Manitou, which is quite clever. Sorry, I didn't get any of it on film, just one of those things, you know, where you're busy. But um, that was quite lucky, to be fair, that the Manitou could get this out. Um, but yeah, it was just a little bit too wet just heading towards marshy, boggy ground, you know. But although the rain's been really good because we've been able to get in the ground with a cultivator, uh, you do, of course, on the other hand, have to be careful not to get stuck. I didn't realise this tractor weighs like seven and a half tonnes and with the, with the Pottinger on, it's, it's nearly 10 tonnes. So my little manatee did well, really. You know, I can imagine, you know, you're getting some real boggy ground Got, not being funny, you've got a 10 ton machine in the ground, to pull that out is, is difficult. And brings me on to my case of having a second tractor. If you've got the second tractor in the yard, you can always come out with that and pull, pull the stuff on out. She's doing well though today. She is doing a good job, grand job. Uh, initially, when I came here early on in the morning, this land which I'm pulling down today looked bloody rough when I was pulling it down. And uh, I'm so happy now if you look behind, like how at the end of the day you get that job satisfaction. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just, I, I'm so happy with the job the Posse just done today. It's done a brilliant job. So uh, yeah, in a minute I'll be heading back to the farmyard and have my go back for a cup of tea, I think, or something like that, something to eat. But yeah, just nice to have job satisfaction, really. It's been a pretty productive day. Pretty productive. And also, I've learned something. Be careful about wet spots, and uh, I need a front weight. Do need a front weight. So I am busy, busy, busy this time of the year, and uh, now we'll now be heading into winter, and we'll do the sugar beet harvest, fodder beet harvest, and all that good stuff. So from today's video, if you could help me out, give this video a thumbs up, and also recommend maybe a front weight to put on the front of the John Deere. Something to weigh it down, get a little bit more traction in those wheels when we're pulling that Pottinger. And there will be another John Deere probably in the future. Whether the 6R will stay and be changed for us another brand, I don't know. But I've always loved the 30 series John Deere, so it probably will be a 30 series. Um, I know we looked at the 10s in the past, at the 6910 when I saw one at Cambridge, but you just can't beat the 30s. They're really nice tractors and they're capable, you know, even by modern standards, you know, you can still use a 30 series. So that's probably what would happen. Uh, so thanks very much for watching today's video. I'm going to enjoy my cup of tea now, end of the day, and then I've got to uh, feed the cows. Enjoy your day, whatever you're up to. Be positive, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.